Okay, Madam Chair, you do have quorum with eight members here. You are good to go. Thank you very much, Heather, and good morning, everyone. Thank you for your patience and for joining us today on this beautiful sunny morning. And we will move right into the agenda, calling this meeting to order at 8.38 on the 5th of May. And I will ask if there is any declaration of interest around the virtual table this morning. Uh, Heather, I'll rely on you to let me know if you see any hands. And none declared, thank you very much. Noting that if anyone needs to, they can declare at any point in time during the meeting. So we will move right into the reports. We do have a motion before us on the investment strategy, but we will have a presentation um, prior to discussion on that motion. So I will turn the floor over to Savannah. Madam, sorry, Savannah, Madam Chair, if we're going to go right from the presentation into the report, then I will need the motion on the floor. Thank you, Heather. Then I will ask for a mover. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Woodbury. And could I have a seconder to put the motion on the floor? I see Councillor Hutchinson. Thank you very much, Councillor Hutchinson. My apologies. And now we will move into the uh, presentation. Thank you so much, Shirley. I'm going to get Steve to introduce Jerry because he is the one who spends the lion's share with uh, our friends at Think Compass. So I'm going to hand it right over to him and then I will work on sharing my screen. It's been a long time since I did that. <laughs> right. Thank you, Savannah. Thank you, everybody. So um, just want to introduce our uh, Jerry Przewalski. Did I did I do it? Do your hand Good. Hand? Jerry, good. All right. Very nice. So Jerry works for Think Canada. And I think, I don't know if your colleagues, some of your colleagues are on the call as well, but um, significant experience in uh, foreign direct investments over a number of years. And if you ever have time, maybe not right now, Jerry, but um, you can talk about all, all the different experiences you've gone through and the success you've had over many years, working not only in um, smaller communities, but with the G, uh, Toronto and, and, and around the world. And it always amazes me the contacts that uh, you have around the world and uh, really been opening our eyes the last number of years. So with that said, um, we, we secured some funding uh, last year from um, the federal government and we undertook this strategy. And so I'll let Jerry introduce the strategy, the draft, uh, draft report and uh, for everyone to so look forward to it, Jerry. Thanks very much, uh, Steve. And good morning to everyone. Um, really a pleasure to be here. And I know that two of my colleagues are on the line as well, uh, Tony Romano and uh, Luigi Presta. So um, let's, let's get into it. I think this morning, well, what we're doing this morning is gonna provide you with a bit of an overview of the work that we've been doing on uh, the investment attraction strategy and share with you some of our thinking and some of our ideas, um, the goals, objectives, strategies, and uh, the implementation schedule. So uh, without any further ado, could we just, uh, next slide please, Savannah. The presentation is gonna focus on five areas, as I mentioned, background and introduction, we're going to talk a little bit about strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats within Gray County. And then look at how we're going to build on strengths and leverage opportunities, the, the sectors that we think are of interest, where uh, our particular interest in the county. Uh, also, uh, through the analysis and, and through the research uh, and uh, conversations with, uh, with staff, we came up with six investment attraction goals, which essentially set the stage for developing the objectives, strategy, and the uh, implementation schedule. Next slide, please. Uh, background and introduction. I think it goes without saying that communities like Gray County are in constant competition for investment. And this uh, competition occurs every time a family decides to move in or out, an employer decides to start up, or downsize, expand, or relocate a business. The government department decides to move. A tourist decides to spend a weekend, and a customer decides where to shop. And those decisions are generally driven by a community's value proposition. So what are the values? What's the competition uh, for, uh, for that activity? What are the options for that activity? And locational advantages and disadvantages are constantly changing. 
as international, national, regional, and local conditions change. And clearly the impact of COVID-19 has shown us that what was once the norm in 2019 really changed significantly in 2020 and 2021, especially the, the advent of uh, virtual remote working. Next slide, please. EDOs uh, have a limited set of tools to influence these choices. And really they only have two tools. One is business retention and expansion. And that's an important tool because it helps uh, EDOs work with the community, work with businesses in the community, talk about retaining the investment and, and helping and encouraging that investment to expand. The other tool is investment attraction itself, where you're looking at essentially companies that are not in the area that you wanna have a conversation with because you know that they're looking to expand their operations and you want them to consider Gray County as a location for that investment because you have uh, strengths and, and uh, uh, opportunities and a value proposition that will help them deal with some of the issues that they're facing. But the linchpin around those two tools is really investment. And investment is a big factor in retaining and helping businesses to expand. And it's a key factor in investment attraction. Next slide, please. People talk about new investment and they say, well, you know, what, what does it do? What does it do for local businesses? And, and it helps local businesses in a number of ways, through exports, through new talent, competition, technology transfer, scale effects and improved inputs. In terms of exports, you have new global distribution networks and, uh, and new markets. And uh, as these, um, as companies come in, they can help local businesses export more, export more efficiently. New talent, local businesses can hire spouses brought to the area by new businesses and may have greater access to people with multinational corporate experience. In the area of competition, increased competition encourages local businesses to operate more efficiently, which boosts their own productivity. Technology transfer, local businesses can transfer new technology brought in some, by some of these new companies or techniques to improve their operations. They can supply new multinational companies with goods and services. So it improves their bottom line and their, their economy of scale. Or at the same time, they can purchase higher quality inputs at lower cost from a multinational company. So new investment coming into the community not only creates jobs and opportunities, it brings in new jobs and opportunities, but it creates, it creates opportunities for existing businesses in the community. Next slide. Please. Investment attraction strategy, um, interestingly, was really built on a couple of things that had already occurred within the county. We kind of looked at what was going on and what was driving decisions. And we realized that the county's new official plan and its previous economic development strategy were really two key drivers uh, that uh, informed uh, the investment strategy. When I looked at, or when we looked at the official plan, we saw that it adopted five key themes that either touch on or deal directly with the need for investment. Cultivate gray, develop gray, natural gray, live gray, move gray. All of those themes had economic development elements within them. The county's previous economic development strategy focused on investment readiness. And this strategy builds on the branding inventory and labor force work that has already been, that had already been completed. Next slide, please. Now let's look a little bit at strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. <clears throat> On the strength side, excuse me, we have availability of land for development, proximity to natural features like the Bruce Peninsula, Beaver Valley, Georgian Bay, the Wyerton International Airport, support of local communities and municipalities, a well-developed manufacturing base, a superb quality of life. Uh, you have the ability to leverage Canada's unique value proposition. 
and to leverage the services from the, the Canada's trade commissioners. Next slide, please. In terms of weaknesses, there's the appearance of a tight labor market. Affordable housing is in short supply, but that's an issue that a lot of communities are facing. Lack of visibility in key markets, lack of an effective and compelling value proposition, accessibility to the 400 series highways, and the inability of communities to collaborate on a set of common economic development objectives. Next slide. In terms of opportunities, there's a number. Development of renewable energy projects. The rising cost of doing business in the GTHA is, uh, is encouraging companies to consider maybe relocating or expanding a portion of their operations. So is the rising cost of living in the GTHA. We've seen that as a result of COVID and, and the influx of people into your community. The downside of that clearly was the uptick in real estate costs. Growth and popularity of working virtually. You know, geography is now not part of the equation. People can work virtually anywhere. Um, uh, and that gives them extreme flexibility and gives companies extreme flexibility. Uh, updating marketing and communication website and the collateral material. And the strong US market that is rebounding from the effects of COVID-19 uh, are all uh, opportunities that we need to consider. Next slide, please. In terms of threat, competition from other jurisdictions. Competition for investment is, is enormous. There are agencies and organizations forming on a daily basis, focusing on nothing else but investment attraction. The inability to differentiate Great County from the competition, insufficient resources to respond to potential investors in a timely and effective manner, lack of suitable land for industrial development, inability to mitigate the issue around affordable housing and lack of a regional focus that addresses individual community needs. Next slide, please. But through all of that, we identified a number of uh, opportunities and, and where we could leverage, we could build on these opportunities and leverage strengths. So um, I'm just trying to move this around a bit here. On the agri-food side, there are large parcels of land, zone rural development with abundance of water, access to Georgian Bay, uh, and uh, a good list of uh, food processors in areas such as apples, turkeys, ice cream, beef, and dairy. You have clean technology opportunities, Bruce Life Extension MCR program, nuclear waste management storage, nuclear waste storage. Uh, isotopes and medical innovation, hydrogen, novel hydroelectric development. All of these uh, investments, all of these projects potentially engage existing businesses, but they will also attract investment from abroad. Um, Knowledge-based uh, industries, knowledge-based opportunities. The increase in remote working resulting in an uptick in knowledge workers residing in the county. Uh, the opportunity to target companies that can operate remotely, leveraging the area's natural attributes and quality of life. I mean, the interesting thing is if you've noticed the advertisements from Nova Scotia and some of the other communities, there's a real focus on quality of life, on the, on the life work balance and the, and the potential to achieve that. And where pre-COVID, we used to say everybody has a great quality of life, um, Post-COVID, that becomes much more of a competitive advantage. Um, and then on the tourism side, there's an abundance of natural features that lead to unique tourism experiences, which coupled with quality of life advantages can be leveraged to attract investment, including the film and, and TV industry. Next slide, please. Investment attraction goals. The strategy identified six key investment attraction goals. 
First goal was work with local business community to encourage and support their commitment to invest, expand, and create jobs and support the efforts of the economic tourism and cultural department. Second goal was to enhance and promote Gray County's presence in the global market. Third goal, convince potential international investors in sectors such as advanced manufacturing, food processing and clean technology, that Gray County is the best place to locate in North America. Market Gray County is a preferred location for investment in these key sectors, advanced manufacturing, food processing and clean technology. Engage with public and private sector organizations to build partnerships that will promote Gray County as an attractive location for investment and position Gray County and its member communities as being investment ready. Next slide. So when we looked at these goals, uh, they were really the basis uh, or created a foundation for a series of objectives and strategies. So the first goal where it focuses on working with the local business community, uh, the objectives were to build and maintain good relationships with existing businesses in Gray County. One of the strategies, build a database of local companies and target relationship building efforts on companies in key industry sectors. A second objective, to develop initiatives aimed at improving business retention. Start interviewing businesses in key industry sectors to identify the challenges they face and develop solutions to enhance retention efforts. Third, to identify existing businesses with potential for new investment or expansion. Engage with the business community to identify those companies that are considering a new investment or an expansion and determine the likelihood that they will remain in their current location. The green, uh, sorry, you're a little too fast. <laughs> if you could go back a bit. I was just gonna say that the green, uh, the green indicates uh, initiatives that the Economic Development Department in Gray County is currently, is gonna start or is currently engaged in. So the, those activities are starting off in year one. But this, this, this goal here and this combination of objectives and strategies is really looking at uh, the whole notion of business expansion, business retention but also it's an opportunity to, to collect intelligence on what other opportunities might be available to attract investment into the area. Are there supply chain requirements by existing businesses that the Economic Development Department could begin focusing on? Next slide, please. Enhance and promote Grace County's presence in the, in the global market. Assign and maintain financial administrative resources to internationally promote Great County on an ongoing basis. Allocate strategies, allocate dedicated resources to the Economic Development Division in support of ongoing investment attraction activities. I mean, bottom line, if you want to do investment attraction, there is a cost associated with it. There is an investment that needs to be made. But the conference board did an analysis a couple of years ago, and they basically came to the conclusion that for every dollar invested, it generated about three and a half dollars in return. So it's not a bad investment to, to, to put money into this area. Next slide, please. Third uh, goal is to convince potential international investors in the key sectors that, uh, that Gray County is the best place to locate in North America. So the objective is to increase the number and quality of leads in the Gray County lead funnel. So generate business investment leads through targeted marketing and business development missions, and then focus on industry sectors and companies that employ skilled and knowledge intensive workers. The second objective is to increase the number of new investments that land in Gray County. So develop a unique value proposition that addresses the hot button issues of industry. The value proposition, uh, there's a general portion to it, but then there's a, a unique portion to it that focuses on the business that you're trying to attract. What are the issues that they're facing and how can Gray County solve, help them solve those issues? 
To increase the dollar value of investment attracted to Gray County is the third objective. So the focus is on mid-sized companies that have the resources to expand and establish new operations. Next slide, please. Fourth goal is to market Gray County as a preferred location. Objectives to build investment ready business cases that substantiate the advantages of expanding into Gray County. So the notion here, and this ties back to the value proposition, is to research and develop in-depth investment business cases, IBCs, that focus on those key sectors. So what are the opportunities that you're going to bring to the business community? And what are the opportunities that you can use to help build or to help develop your presence in the market? So these IBCs are not, are not only of interest, would not only be of interest to the business community, but also to the Canadian Post, to the, to the uh, consulates and to the folks that are engaged in investment attraction at the federal and also at the provincial level, so that they have something to talk about to their business community. Make foreign investors aware of the business opportunities that exist in Gray County. So present the IBCs to potential investors and investment intermediaries as part of the investment attraction mission. Educate investment influencers on the funnel of business opportunities in primary employment sectors, manufacturing, agriculture, tourism, accommodation, and food services. To increase the awareness of Gray County's IBCs, meet with foreign intermediaries, Canadian Post and other investment influencers, making them aware of the opportunities that are available in Gray County. Next slide, please. Engage with public and private sector organizations to build partnerships to promote Gray as an attractive location for investment. So make provincial and federal governments aware of the county's advantages as a um, premier investment destination and a place to do business. Work with provincial ministries like OMAFRA and the Ministry of Economic Development and federal departments and the consulates to improve Gray County's recognition as an investment destination for advanced manufacturing, agribusiness, food processing and renewable energy technologies. Leverage existing organizations that focus on investment attraction. So here the plan here, the strategy here is join pan-regional agencies with a mandate to attract investment in your key industry sectors, such as maybe the Ontario Food Cluster, or join the uh, Economic Developers Council of Ontario and some of their initiatives at investment attraction. Just, just a sidebar on this, I mean, people kind of look at this and they wonder and they say, well, you know, I'm not sure that we can do this, but there's examples. I mean, the Southwestern Ontario Marketing Alliance is a great example of three communities that years ago uh, got together, uh, Woodstock, Stratford, and St. Thomas got together and decided that they wanted to collectively market internationally as the Southwestern Ontario Marketing Alliance. And they became very, very successful and they went around the world and they continue to do so. Uh, they started that in the 90s. And the partnership has, uh, has changed over the years. But interestingly, whilst Middlesex County was a partner at one time, London never was a partner. And uh, they've, they started off in automotive and now they're moving into food processing and technology. Uh, and they're recognized and they're known. And, and uh, when I worked at the uh, GTMA, I'd come across them at all the major trade shows and conferences. And they were very, very, and they are very effective. So there's, there's no reason why uh, Gray County can't do something similar. Next slide, please. Position Gray County and its member communities investment ready. But one of the things about SOMA, and I just have to jump back into this, is that they came to the table sharing the same objectives, sharing the same values. They were, they were a partnership, they were a team. And I think that's really important to develop cohesive support for collectively shared priorities. And that, that's what they did. So you wanna develop an articulated vision and role at the local level 
regarding investment attraction. So what do the local communities, what are the local communities going to do? And adopt a collective and cohesive effort towards economic development, both at the local and county level. And then the uh, second goal here is to enhance Great County's effectiveness in providing investment aftercare and support for investment promotion initiatives. I mean, we call this the soft landing program. So uh, there's two elements to it. Initiate an investment attraction training program to build a team, but then also develop a soft landing program, leveraging uh, local service providers to help them uh, help new investors understand how to do business in Gray County. Next slide, please. Ah, the last slide. Thank you, questions or comments? Madam Chair, I will let you know that we have lost quorum. Um, Ashley Chapman has had to leave. So we can answer general questions from the committee members but we can't proceed any further with a recommendation or moving the business of the county ahead at all. Um, I think uh, with Savannah and Randy, they're going to bring the report directly to Committee of the Whole for consideration. So I just wanted you to be aware of that. And once the questions are complete um, related to the presentation, then we will need to adjourn the meeting and have it the rest of it rescheduled. Heather, thank you for that, but I'm sorry to hear that news. <laughs> okay, so we will uh, begin with questions then for Jerry and our uh, and uh, staff in relation to the report we have just heard. And I see Councillor Body with his hand up. Thank you very much, uh, Jerry. Are those the worst threats you could come up with? <laughs> like, like we're, we're it, those aren't bad. Like, I think we're sitting pretty if, if that's sort of the worst things uh, which that was one of the things that stood out reading your whole report I did notice it uh, where you talked about I think arts and culture you referred to uh, the ski hill and uh, the town of blue which I think kind of misses a whole lot in, on, on culture when you've got people like Tom Thompson uh, buried here and an art gallery and so many other arts and cultural things symphonies that are 50 years old and uh theater that's 50 years old, like culture is so much bigger uh, right across Gray County and some pretty amazing historic people that are born all through the county. So, well, no, I think that is, uh, I was gonna say not that that matters, but I think it does matter in a sense that uh, certainly our heritage and our culture throughout Gray County and the famous people that have come from here and changed the world is, um, perhaps one of those things that we can uh, wave um, and be part of this. But again, I, I, I like the recommendations and everything that's there. That was just one little thing that jumped out in my head. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Body, And uh, we'll move over to Councillor Bourguignon. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just in regards to, in, in regards to, the, to the threats, I see um, the, the lack of land um, or zoned land properly. I know we're finding that an issue in TBM for, we had, we actually had a manufacturing plant that wanted to set up, we just couldn't find the land and then going to Simcoe into Collingwood. So I, I, I think that is a, a large threat, you know, especially being able to get the, whether it's industrial lands or whatever the case may be zoning. So that's something I think each municipality can work on within within Greta to help be, be, be I guess, shovel ready, um, I guess. Because um, I, I do see that as a threat. So I know firsthand we lost a, um, a great uh, a great opportunity because we just couldn't service them. So um, that's something I think we should be all cognizant of. And I, I know we are at, at the town. So thanks for identifying that. Thank you. And um, if I may, I'll jump in with a question for Jerry. Um, I noticed in the um, SWAT and in the goals, um, I didn't see broadband mentioned, and I'm wondering if that's included or implied in another point, or do we feel as a county that we are in a, uh, a significant enough position with the plans that we have in place to achieve broadband across the county? Because there is a lot of mention of uh, agriculture, and we know we've got some rural areas that are yet under service. So I, I just wonder your thoughts on that, Jerry. 
I mean, I think I think broadband is is becoming like. Um, I mean, I, I think from an investment attraction, businesses assume that you have great broadband and great fiber, and you're going to have to have that not just for the businesses that you currently have in terms of manufacturing and IT, the obvious ones, but also when you look at the agricultural community, it's starting to become, if it hasn't already become, highly, highly dependent on information technology. So you have computer control, you have a whole host of technologies that are getting involved on the agricultural side that are dependent on that. And if you don't have fiber, it's like industrial zoned industrial land. I mean, the expectation is there. And if you don't have it, and if you're not properly serviced, that's an issue and you need to, you need to get it done because not having it means that you're not investment ready. There's, there's no two ways about it. People are working remotely. Uh, they're looking at options. Companies are, are heavily dependent on, um, on uh, fiber uh, and communities that don't have it are gonna lose out. So do you feel, Jerry, that should be mentioned in uh, the SWAT perhaps? It could be, but I think uh, my, my, yeah, we can, we can include it. We could, we could include it, but I think it's, it's, it, it's in there. Uh, I guess it's in there in so far as there's an expectation that those services are, are available. And I'm not, it's not clear to me if, if you have, if, is it inconsistency in the servicing or is it, is it, uh, or are you consistently poorly served? It's not something that came up essentially in our conversations. No, so I'll, I'll certainly leave it to staff to continue that conversation with you. And while you have the floor, Jerry, did you wish to comment on the uh, points made by Councillors Body and Broken Hill? Uh, I think clearly on uh, on the um, zoned industrial land, uh, you need to have zoned industrial land, and it has to be you have to be shovel ready uh, for uh, to be effective in investment attraction. I mean, it, it's it's pointless if you don't have industrial land to begin um, trying to attract new investment. You know, you need to you need to have that. You need to have a place for those companies to locate. Um, but it doesn't, in, in some instances, doesn't need to necessarily be raw land. You could have a vacant buildings. You could have buildings that uh, could be uh, the use could be um, um, rezoned. Uh, so you have that, you may have that flexibility. In terms of the arts and culture, um, really our focus was on industries that were looking at IT, manufacturing, uh, food processing, those kinds of industries. I think the point that, that uh, Councillor made was a great one. Uh, I agree, but it's something that can be leveraged as part of uh, the tourism related uh, investment activities. Thank you. Heather, are there more questions? I'm just not seeing everyone. I don't see any more, Madam Chair. Any other? Um, then I'll um, ask another one, if I may, probably more so for staff, for Stephen, Savannah. Uh, thinking of our CAIP plan, which is amazing, and the business mix analysis that you're undertaking, could you just speak a little bit about how those programs tie in with the uh, investment strategy that we have uh, just heard about this morning. Sure, absolutely. Uh, the community improvement plan, that is definitely one of those first investment readiness pieces that we needed to get in place. That's that policy work uh, and the incentives that will now be available as we are going out to be able to attract. So those tools exist uh, because of all of work that all of our communities have done together. So that is absolutely a piece that we will leverage uh, when we are looking to do the attraction and build out that supply chain. Um, and on the business mix analysis side, that fits in as well because it's that quality of life and making sure that we have vibrant um, downtowns where people want to be and they want to explore and they want to support local because we know that COVID has really kind of reinforced the message that you know, downtowns are really important and they're a wonderful place to gather and they're full of wonderful small businesses and, and that 
fits that quality of life aspect. And that's where we find the arts and the culture and the restaurants and those areas to gather. So um, all of those pieces fit in as part of that investment readiness work that's been done to this point. So we're really pleased to be able to say that we are at a point now where we can start to look at investment attraction really purposefully um, because you know, if you would have asked us this five years ago, we said, no, we weren't ready. We didn't have the policies in place. We didn't have uh, the other work that needed to be done. And that's what we've spent the last five years doing together as all of Gray County and um, with all of our member municipalities. So now that that is there, we can take the next step and then we can draw on those pieces uh, to start advancing the actual attraction side of things. And I can tell you're really excited about that, Savannah, and thinking of the international connections and opportunities that uh, that could come to gray and and the green energy frontier comes to mind as well and the uh, potential through that organization to to attract so uh, yeah it's uh, exciting times ahead for sure uh, councillor bergignon uh, thank you madam chair it, just just touching on what uh, councillor body said uh, you know i agree with him wholeheartedly and it's strange for me to say that being within blue mountains but we even have a divide ourselves you know from the 705 to the 519 you know, the, the, the mountain is on the furthest uh, east side and then downtown Thornberry. So when everybody's visiting, you know, we say we have downtown Thornberry and we actually say go over to Meaford because those are the, sort of the two local downtowns close to us. And then there's so much great things further west. You know, we've called Clarksburg now Artsburg because of the arts and culture. And and, and uh, so we really have almost, we, we almost define ourselves separately when the Indian Brook River crosses, like I said, the 705 to the 519. So to Councillor Body's point, there's so much more than, than the mountain itself. And the mountain itself is a, you know, it's a world-class entity, but um, just the, the beauty of Gray County heading west, um, starting in the 519, you know, starting from our town, right, it, you know, blends beautifully into yours and then further west. So I think that's a very good point that he brought up, how it's nothing can be one thing centric and, and the arts and culture aspect of, of Gray, I, I find very interesting. We're a big proponent of uh, pushing the arts, especially like I said, even, you know, nobody even calls it Clarksburg, we all call it Artsburg now. So that's, th th that, that was a good point that the councillor brought up. I just, uh, I want him to know that we're on board with that. I really appreciate that. And certainly uh, from my perspective here in Meaford, we couldn't agree more with our Meaford Hall and we've developed a, a substantial arts community as well and music, the number of incredibly talented musicians that we have living locally is just amazing. And bringing all of that on board and together and thinking of how we can grow that. I saw a film uh, mentioned as an opportunity and perhaps you know, there's a connection there to, uh, to start to tie that together because it seems that you know, we're attracting more artists all the time. We have a display now in our gallery that's all local artists and it's, it's really, really special. So thank you for reinforcing that point. And I see Savannah has her hand up. Oh, thank you and then sorry Jerry I can see you <laughs> waving too I just wanted to say that I, I really really love what you just said uh, Councillor Bourneignon it when we look at investment attraction and when we look at economic development as a whole we're looking at all of Gray County and everything that every one of our municipalities and every one of our communities brings to the table because we need that when we're talking to investors they want to know about what uh, it would be like to live in Blue Mountains for their senior managers and what it's like to be able to experience arts and culture downtown Owen Sound and what it's like to be able to access Mennonite manufacturing in Southgate. So they're looking at the whole gamut and that's really, really important for us and something that, you know, we really hope that this strategy is demonstrating and our commitment is demonstrating is that we all need to be working together. We all need to be understanding the benefits and those opportunities that exist right across Gray, whether it's in our backyard or not, um, because they all make a real impact and they will be the difference between our ability to land investment and not uh, when we are taking that much broader vision and uh, that you know bigger Gray County hat and understanding how individually and collectively all of our strengths um, will impact our ability to attract investment. So I really, really love what you said and I just wanted to uh, to reinforce, so thank you. And thank you for that, Savannah, because I think what I'm hearing 
you suggest that we as lower tiers have some responsibility in this as well, and that we need to make sure that uh, the Gray County Economic Development Department is aware when we've got exciting new things coming into our own communities, because you can't possibly keep up with everything that's happening in every community. So there is an onus on us to make sure that we are communicating often and effectively with you. And I see Jerry has his hand up and then Deputy Warden McQueen. Just, uh, I just wanted to sort of reiterate a little bit on, uh, on what's, I didn't know what Savannah was gonna say, but it was, it was, it was clearly in line with, with my thinking. I mean, I mean, the comments with respect to the arts and culture that's currently in Gray County and the comment regarding the availability of zoned, uh, zoned land for development, those things are part, are part and parcel of your value proposition. So when it is time to develop your unique value proposition to tell people why they should invest in Gray County, how Gray County is different from other locations, those elements are the key ele are some of the key elements that you're going to want to leverage. Um, I mean, that's what's going to help differentiate you from other competing communities. And those comments with respect to quality of life, they, they feed into the quality of life. Those are all important and have become even more important now that you have people working remotely and people looking to find ways of balancing uh, work and, and their life. Uh, so those essentially are, in my way of thinking, you know, it's part of your, it's your competitive advantage. And, and I, see, I see those elements getting included most definitely in uh, in the UVPs, that, that that to me is is sort of the clear clear spot for them, and it's it's really how you are going to go out and speak to the various international investors or other investors, how you're going to make your point with the various investment influencers at the posts and at the province. So uh, I, I uh, you know I think those those two areas are are really key, and I'm, I'm really kind of glad at like Savannah said, that you folks raised it. Thanks. And I appreciate that, Jerry, because here in Mayford, we utilize uh, the suggestion of, of quality of life and the ability for a balance um, within life as we uh, focus on doctor recruitment, because we think that gives us an advantage and will hopefully encourage doctors to choose us. So we, uh, we work with that. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Warden McQueen. Thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, good discussion. Um, I want to zero in on the clean, clean energy technology type side. I think we have a real opportunity there, just as we know where we're heading. Uh, somebody was just mentioned about our manufacturing C4 plants or however you want it, depending on which municipality you have. So we do sort of have a workforce that could, you know, build some of that new technology if we just had the investment in designing or developing what that is. You know, we look at um, our youth and I know over the years of being in municipal government for a long time, we always talk about how do we keep our youth here? And it's high technology and that, I think there's a lot of uh, opportunity and potential there. And, you know, so I, I look at a, a number of different things that you've identified and and, and I know Steve Furness always has talked about it quite a bit is, uh, you, know, you know, in Gray Highlands, uh, Southgate, a bit of West Gray, and other areas, we do have a workforce that does have those commercial uh, uh, abilities to build things. We have that work. We have that advantage. So if we can try to market that or have those conversations or have a plan on that, I think because that also helps support agriculture. Because as we know, agriculture is a you know, it's, it's struggle in itself to support that farm, you know, it's, uh, you know, that's always been the, the big thing in the sense of agriculture is, is the bottom line is you need a good revenue source to keep that farm going in a lot of cases, the family farm or however, but, you know, there's a community group that is in Gray County that has figured that out and is working within the community to build things and make things here locally. So I, I know, you know, I'm, I'm it's not new to the conversation that I'm having with others, but it's something that I think we could build on 
but also that technology and, and that ability with our youth and younger people to develop those technologies that then need to be built by another sector, which then supports our local economy, which supports our local families, which supports a lot of things. And we know with transportation costs and everything as well, there's a lot of dynamics that are that are going on. And maybe I'm throwing out a lot of stuff here, but I just wonder if you could expand on that a little bit. Uh, sure, actually it's music to my ears because in, in all my years of doing economic development, uh, the first question that a company asks me or a company president asks me, and that's really top of mind is labor availability. I mean, everything is great, you know, I mean, you've got, you got a great lifestyle, everything, you've got land, you've got, everything is going, going your way. But the first question that they ask is labor availability. And and you, I think you have it. And I think it's not just a matter of uh, the, the sort of the, the, of the available labor, but it's also the programs that you have in place, like the Ontario Youth Apprenticeship Program. Uh, those kinds of initiatives where you're trying to create opportunities for young people uh, and retain that those young, that young, that youth in your community. I mean, it, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's a key thing. And it, and it's, it's something that you will develop and you will include in the value proposition. I mean, that, that's really part of your competitive advantage, how you deal and how you present that uh, to the business community. So the fact that you have those resources I mean, I know that, uh, or at least I've heard that the, you know, the Mennonite community are, uh, there's, I think there's about 400 of them in the last count that are manufacturing products that uh, are quite sophisticated. And some of them are even exporting those, uh, those products. So that's a phenomenal resource and it's a phenomenal competitive advantage. But the big thing about it is it helps you as a community differentiate yourself from everyone else. And, and that becomes key. Uh, uh, that, that becomes the key factor. I mean, how is it that Great County is different and, and unique and, uh, and has all the advantages that can satisfy a potential investor uh, as they're looking to expand their operations. You know, Just so. to follow up on that through your manager, I know we had George College that, you know, from an educational side as well, and, and I know they're ramping up their opportunities to do um, apprenticeship trades and, and training that way, but I think it's so key is to, to communicate and link. But I think it's got to start with our local schools, our local boards of education, and get that ingrained that we have opportunities here and this is what you know just as a rural brief thing way back when I was in high school the shipyard used to be in Collingwood and there was a there was a delegation that went to the high schools saying here here's an opportunity you know things are happening well we know what happened with Collingwood shipyard it's in 1985 they closed but um you know but still you need that you need to have that opportunity or instill opportunity because if you create opportunity for young people and they, they can start to think about the opportunities locally instead of having to go away. So thank you for those comments. Mm -hmm. Yes, I really like this discussion. And, and to me, it also ties in, of course, with the, the affordable housing, which is mentioned in the report. And I know that there's, we won't get into that, but there's lots of work being done in that area. And we see it all now starting to come together. So that's, uh, it, it is it is very exciting. Uh, Savannah, you have your hand up. I just wanted to take the opportunity too to say uh, when we look at our unique value propositions and probably one of the biggest things that we've done um, for the investment readiness side is through Sydenham campus and it's the work that's being done there to connect Georgian College and the school boards and our entrepreneurship side of things and build that ecosystem out so that we have prototyping we have training we have all the parties together in one spot and that goes a long way, especially on the business retention and expansion side, uh, because that focus first and foremost is being able to promote and support the businesses that we have here today so that 
they do have um, you know, the resources to be able to rely on. They have the connections and with YMCA in there delivering uh, training programs as well. It's just, it's really fitting. And I think that that's something that we can certainly draw on as part of our value proposition because Great County's made a significant investment in that. And you know, we were really committed to bringing all parties together and to not duplicating resources so that we can see more, uh, more success come out of the campus itself uh, for our employers and for our entrepreneurs and, and right across the board. So I think that that is also going to be a key driver uh, in what we're doing here through the investment attraction strategy. Uh, because when we do talk to new businesses and current businesses about what it is that we're doing at Sydenham, they get really excited um, because they know that we're doing that specifically for them. Uh, so that is uh, another key that not many communities can be able to say that they've invested in and they have uh, ready to go. So Another kudos to Gray County uh, Council and, and everyone for getting us to where we are with Sydenham. It's such a proud moment, Savannah, and just taking an, an opportunity to congratulate you and your team for all of your efforts. And I will always think of you as you spoke about being in there with brooms and dustpans and paintbrushes and getting that facility ready and look where it is today and the businesses that you're helping. So I I do hope that it is one of the initiatives that you are most proud of in all that you've accomplished. And Deputy Warden McQueen. Yes, uh, Madam Chair, and you're right, this, this, this gets a lot of uh, conversations flowing, which I like as well. And uh, I think back to uh, uh, Savannah, but uh, Descenda with regards to the, I'm trying to think what it was called, where the kids came to that and we, we gave some money as Gray County and, and that was an opportunity to uh, expose young kids to different kinds of trades and stuff. I'm trying to think what it's called. And I know somebody will throw it out there, but I know uh, I attended that. And maybe that's something we as Gray County need to expand on in other communities as well. In, in concert with the school boards because it, it, it made a good investment where kids were brought together. They were they were showing stuff and 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 opportunities. And I it just escapes me to the name. So maybe to you, Madam Chair, maybe Jacinda could talk about that. Is Jacinda with us? Yes, I'm here. And through you, Madam Chair, um, uh, I'm I'm I can't think of. Are you talking about Launchpad? Or are you talking about a, a yes, program? Yes, yes. Launchpad. Launchpad. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. And actually, I just wanted to comment. Um, uh, you know, connecting with youth has always kind of been within our, our, our portfolio or our mandate to attract and connect with the students in this with, you know, through the school board. Um, but I just wanted to mention that when we had our employer consultation um, a few weeks ago now, I guess, uh, one of the biggest trends was employers really asking and wanting to invest in youth. And I'm going to say that typically that's not usually that common. But uh, employers are really looking outside the box and really trying to do um, attract their workforce in different ways. They're also looking at, and I was going to mention this before, um, they're looking at ways in which they can attract international, internationally skilled workers. They're seeing the return on the potential for return on investment in um, putting money forth with a private um, private uh, institution or a private uh, worker in immigration consulting. And seeing the value and maybe getting those skilled workers to their workplace and also even looking into um, kind of mass hiring for general laborers and looking into how they can do that through um, the international channels. So that is definitely, you know, working, trying to get in the school boards, trying to get into the schools um, and looking at uh, attracting and retaining international skilled workers has been definitely a trend with the employers over the past uh, year with our workforce challenges. That is absolutely great news, Jacinda. Thank you. Heather, am I missing any hands? I don't see any, Madam Chair. Okay, so I want to make sure that everyone has the opportunity. Is there any further discussion um, while we have Jerry with us and, and staff on the report that we've heard this morning? Deputy Warden McQueen. Yeah, I just wonder if uh, the representatives from Think Compass, I know Tony, you're on here, and, and uh, Luigi, I just don't know if you have any comments with regards to your input. And I, I always like to draw out everybody's comments. So I just I just leave it at that uh, discretion, Mr. Madam Chair. 
Yes, absolutely. If uh, if Luigi and Tony would like to comment, please do. Sure, I'd be happy to. Thank you, uh, Mayor McQueen. Uh, you know, it, it was uh, listening to all the comments made right here, and we just had a forty-five minute work session on how best to develop a unique value proposition for Great County, which is terrific. I mean, this is really the foundation of starting to do investment attraction, and from my experience. You're never going to get the full inventory of assets to be able to satisfy investors, but you want to become, you want to get as close as possible to it. Uh, I, I remember, I remember having a client come in, uh, in, in the GTA and they were coming in for a week and doing a soft landing program. And we were thinking about, you know, who, which business are we going to introduce them to, you know, which government officials and so forth. At the end of the day, he said, I want to be able to experience what my family ex would experience day to day, you know, going to the mall, going to the school, because at the end of the day, investment attraction, as much as it's about, you know, business inputs, it's about people. It's about people investing in the community and you have to be ready to respond to that. And so the best way to do it is to get the collective assets of all your, your communities uh, and be able to position that as your value proposition. And that's what I'm hearing right now. When you're talking about land and labor, technology, culture, heritage, broadband, Mennonite community, Georgian college, that, those are assets that you have available to you to go out and take internationally as well as nationally. So I'm glad that we're having this discussion, which I think is the, gonna be your foundation to, to begin to launch the strategic plan that, that we've worked on over the past year. So it's great to hear, that's perfect. Thank you for that, Tony. I really appreciate your approach of thinking of the family because I agree with you. You are attracting not just the person who's going to open the plant, but yes, everyone that he brings with him or she. Oh, Back to their spouse, their children who are going to go to school. And so they want to experience you know, what is the day to day living like in the, in the community. So you have to be ready. And you've got the perfect uh, formula for that. So you're ahead of the game for with you know, from that, that standpoint. There are other things that, you know, we must admit we need to work on, but that'll come over time. Well, we certainly agree with you. Thank you. You're welcome. And uh, I see I see Ward McQueen has his hand up, Deputy Ward McQueen, but did Luigi have anything to add? And then we'll, we'll come back to the Deputy Warden. I'm okay at this time, thank you. Okay, so Deputy Warden McQueen. So I'm gonna put the challenge out there for all that's listening here today that I think we need to, to elevate this and create a buzz. I know when we created the Ag 4.0, 4.1, 4.2, that created a, quite a buzz on the agricultural side in Gray County. And I don't know, Madam CEO or anybody else on this call, I think we need to have a forum about Gray County and why Gray County is what Gray County is and 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 and, and bring all the assets to the to a two-day thing and 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 make Gray County noticed and, and Ontario and maybe Canada and maybe international. I think we got to create a buzz here and, and what we're all about and what we are looking at and where that steps along here, you know, through uh, developing a strategy and stuff. But I think at some point, like I said, I put the challenge out there that we need to, up, we need to step up here and, and, and create that buzz. I don't know if there's any comments there. The AO Wingrove, would you like to comment? Thanks so much. And I certainly, um, Marketing, promotion, community engagement are all really critical success factors uh, to any strategy that we put forward. So I, I think that uh, you know we are going to take um, that suggestion and, and recommendation um, forward as we make the the future plans um, about this, and as we engage all of our um, other community partners, our member municipalities, and others who have a big stake in economic development. I think something like that is successful if um, you have a number of voices around the table all kind of wanting to move things in the same direction. So I think it would take a bit of doing, but I think it's a wonderful suggestion and, uh, and potentially a way to, uh, to showcase the people that have already made a decision to, to be here and have been successful here. Um, I think that's what we've tried to do with Made in Grey and, and other things, but perhaps there are um, more future focused ways to uh, amp up that message. So Savannah is listening hard and so is Randy. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So we'll look forward to a further discussion on that. I see Heather has her hand raised. 
Madam Chair, I'm pleased to announce that uh, John Kerbink has joined us. So we do have a quorum here and we can continue with the meeting. Yay. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, John. Madam Chair, I just had to talk long enough. That's why. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I thought we'll just take our time and discuss this report because it was just such an extensive and, and interesting and exciting report. So the discussion really has been wonderful. And uh, now that we have quorum, is there anyone else who wanted to speak to the report before we go back to the motion on the floor? And Heather seeing no hands. Okay, so we'll go back to the motion. We did have a mover and a seconder. And is there any further discussion on the motion itself, uh, which is that, that uh, we receive the investment attraction strategy and that staff be directed to develop and execute the first mission as per the 2022 contribution agreement for Can Export Community Investment Subprogram, and that staff maintain the relationship with Think Compass and enter an annual contract to execute the three year strategic action plan alongside staff as per annual budget approval. So, if there's no further discussion on that as presented, I will ask for an all in favor. All in favor? And Heather is nodding. Thank you very much. Uh, the next item on our agenda is roundtable discussion, but I kind of think we just had a pretty good roundtable, unless there's anything anyone else would like to add in relation uh, to roundtable discussion at this point in time. I think Councillor Body has his hand up. Thank you, Randy. Councillor Body. Just want to share with everybody that uh, Steve Furness and I went to the uh, Canadian Nuclear Association uh, Conference in Ottawa. Uh, I think Gray's uh, staff have been there a few years ago, but we haven't been there kind of consistently for a little while. And it was a very good experience to talk to many people uh, about things like isotopes and small nuclear reactors and, uh, and energy storage and hydrogen and all those things. And, uh, you know, in, in a nutshell, we're pretty lucky to have Bruce Power next door. And uh, we've got lots of opportunities coming out of that, which Jerry just kind of caught a corner about uh, as well, that is going to give us uh, opportunities. So it was a, a good meeting for Steve and I to attend. And uh, my, I think we've got lots of opportunities going forward uh, that have kind of fallen into our lap. So I shouldn't say they've fallen into our lap. You know, 15 years ago, when we talked about clean energy, uh, there's a lot of argument that if we try and uh, get off of the uh, carbon-based uh, economy, the economy will collapse. And uh, others argue that in the future, we'll have different opportunities with clean energy. And that future is here now. And, uh, and we're sitting in the right place geographically and, and in time. So that, that was one of the things that came out of that conference that I, I think we're we're right on the cusp of uh, great opportunities here, right across Great Bruce Huron, but especially here. So thanks. No, and thank you, Councillor Body. That's uh, really, I'm really glad that you attended that conference. And don't forget to give yourself a pat on the back, Mayor Body. You've done a great job of, uh, of attracting to all in sound. So well done. Anything else for roundtable discussion? And if not, we'll move into other business. Uh, first item, job fairs. Jacinda, would you like to speak to those? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so I just wanted to give a, a brief outline of the job fairs that we posted um, in the past. And um, over the past few years, and in partnership, we posted uh, quite a few annual uh, regional job fairs. And the, the participation has consistently increased from about 400 to um, over a thousand participants in uh, February, 2020. So that was right before the pandemic. And then um, this past March, April, we decided to host three job fairs that were, that were um, spread out throughout Gray County. So there was Hanover, um, Owen Sound and Meaford. And the participation uh, definitely has changed. Um, in Hanover, we had 79 people attend in Owen Sound, we have about 160 people attend, and then Meaford, 52 people attended. So, you know, there's a total of just under, I think, 300 it was, um, 300 participants. Uh, that number is definitely significantly lower than normally. 
and you know maybe some of the the COVID concerns and attending something in person might have impacted the numbers but it's hard not to consider the numbers being so low um, as i mentioned before um, you know employers are are really trying to address their workforce challenges in different ways and um, youth young people uh, are definitely one of the uh, population groups that they're looking at they want to try and get in with the schools and they want to try and get in early so that they can um, uh, let let youth know that there are opportunities here sure you can go away and but if you come back there are some opportunities and not just and i you know some of the manufacturers we spoke to they're talking about um, you know, there are other jobs besides the general laborer or start with our position and move up within our, our company. So they're highlighting the, the potential for moving, um, uh, moving up along or moving up the ladder within their organization or their company. Um, and then, like I mentioned before, just that uh, they're also looking at internationally skilled, uh, skilled workers and something to consider, you know, it does align really well with some of the um, uh, cultural awareness and equity, diversity, and inclusion uh, training that we're doing and um, and connecting with employers to make sure that, that there's that cultural workplace that's addressed and understanding that if we're looking to um, bring investment here, it like it's been mentioned, it's a whole package. It's, you know, uh, what type of culture do we have? What type of um, resources? What type of, um, you know, um, uh, connections can they make when they get here and then looking at the family as a whole as potential workforce options um just just with the participants that attended the job fair uh this past year it's pretty consistent about 50 percent came that are unemployed um and that's pretty consistent for the past uh few years pre-pandemic as well um but again the numbers are really low when we don't have those those numbers those bodies the people to fill some of those positions and employers are looking at different ways to address those challenges thank That's you it. Jacinda. and that really is such a concern for every single business trying to get people and i would say in our me for job fair even though the attendance was low um, most of the businesses left with uh, with resumes so that was encouraging and i want to Thank you, Jacinda, and your team for all of your efforts in, in organizing and promoting the fairs. And certainly there was a good turnout by the businesses and there was opportunity for them to network and, and connect, which was uh, enjoyed, I think. And yeah, uh, yeah hopefully going forward, we'll, uh, we'll see more people coming out looking for work. But uh, thank I think you. it was time well spent. Thank you. It's a great team effort. Thank you. Yeah. Any comments on the job fairs from uh, anyone around the table? No, oh, thank you, Heather. Uh, the Great Bruce, I'm sorry, I missed uh, B. Sindham Campus and Business Enterprise Center update. Savannah? Sorry, that will be Steve for Sindham Campus and then Courtney for Business Enterprise Center. Thank you. I'll just give you a quick update on the Sydenham Campus. Uh, so we're obviously the pandemic has impacted how fast we've been able to implement, but we're starting to gear up and, and achieve what was in the original business plan. So. I think Savannah mentioned it earlier, but we still have uh, the YMCA uh, training going on in the healthcare sector, Catapult Gray Bruce, which is our business accelerator is here, uh, Small Business Enterprise Center. We now have a daycare that started uh, in the in the, in the the east side and hopefully it grows. Uh, right now we have Elections Ontario here that's taken up a lot of space. And of course we gladly like their revenue. And we uh, and then we've had lots of training going on as a facility. The, the gym is really a preferred place to do training. So I think the one day we had uh, Owen Sound Parks and Rec, as well as uh, Gray County Highways Department. It looked like a, a pickup truck convention here, but a lot of training going on. And if you happen to be around on uh, May 12th, uh, the Catholic School Board is holding their STEM competition, uh, skills competition for youth in their high schools here. And we're gonna have about 300 kids descend. So that's a really, that's exactly how we envisioned the building to be used. And then moving forward, we're, we're getting very close to um, deciding and buying, starting to buy equipment for our fab lab and our maker space. But we're really making sure that we've talked to industry, that we've talked to Georgian college uh, and that we're getting the right uh, equipment and, and today I'm talking with a company that does prototyping and that's all they do. So we want to make sure 
that we're getting the right 3D printers and uh, other equipment so that our it supports not just training, but our, our small business uh, prototyping and, and entrepreneurship. So we're getting there and uh, I look forward to more public active engagement with activities now that we're getting on the other side of COVID. Thank you. Steve, that's an incredible amount of progress over the past months, considering what you faced, as you say, with COVID. So congratulations and, uh, and well done. And, and is there any comment or question um, from the committee members? And I've lost Heather. So <laughs> if anyone wants to speak, please just speak up. No, there isn't, ma'am, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay. And uh, see the Gray Bruce Local Immigration Partnership update. And uh, Madam please... Chair, sorry, I think um, Courtney Miller is going to provide an update on the Business Enterprise Center. Oh, I apologize. Absolutely right. So that's part of uh, point B. I apologize. Yes, Courtney. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Madam Chair. So just I'll give you a quick update on what's happening over at the Business Enterprise Center and some of the trends we're seeing around entrepreneurship so far this year. So I would say our numbers are really on par with the years previous as far as the volume of people coming through the center. We're a little bit higher this year than last year. We've done just over 50 kind of one-on-one -on -one sit down consultations with small business owners or those who are exploring entrepreneurship so far this year. Um, we are seeing a lot more people in the kind of ideation early stage than we have in years previous. So we always let our clients kind of dictate uh, the services we offer and the training we offer. So we're doing a lot more or um, work around kind of business plan develop and helping them work through those ideas. I always say that my consultation is just as successful if I talk you out of entrepreneurship as if I support you in moving forward with entrepreneurship because it's not an easy path. Um, so there are a lot of those conversations happening and I'm finding I'm doing a lot more referrals back to YMCA employment services and the supports they offer, having the conversation with individuals, you know, maybe it's not entrepreneurship that you need, maybe it's a different role in a workplace. Um, so the conversations are always shifting here um, based on what we're seeing kind of the climate of the, um, the area. Um, but you know, the interest in entrepreneurship definitely isn't decreasing by any means. Um, we just launched our Starter Company Plus program, which is our adult training and grant program. We have, um, I think, 23 businesses who are moving forward to the training portion of that program and representation from across Gray County. Um, and then out of that, we will award eight to 10 grants to support businesses that are kind of moving forward and the best fit for the program. We are seeing our, you know, very typical kind of spread of sectors, those in the service industry, those in the trades, um, not seeing any tourism businesses this year, which is the first year where we haven't had any come through. And I think that is likely just due to workforce. And, you know, that industry is still a little bit behind and still playing catch up. So I think, you know, that's going to take a little bit longer before we see the influx of those businesses coming back, as well as any of the kind of restaurant businesses. We're not really seeing those at the moment either. Um, in regards to Summer Company, which is our youth training program, um, it is mostly full for this year. We have one space space remaining in that program, but we have some really exciting youth-led businesses this year that we are excited to be supporting. Um, other than that, uh, our kind of our plans for the fall are to move much more back into in-person programming. I think we talk a lot about this in economic development. You know, we had such a mass migration to the area throughout the pandemic, but that retention doesn't happen unless those connections are made. And that's just as important in the small business community, perhaps even more important because they can support each other. So our fall programming is really going to look at it, bringing those people together in, in Sydenham and allowing them to make those connections in person. So that will be our focus for the fall. Thank you, Courtney. And that really reminds me, as we just heard the report about uh, investment attraction of thinking of the many 70% of our businesses that are sole proprietorships and, and the networking possibilities if anybody is looking to, uh, you know, to uh, find a space to, uh, to set up shop. And we uh, certainly can accommodate. Thank you. Yeah. Are there any questions or comments for Courtney? And Heather says no. Okay, so now we'll move on to see the Gray Bruce Local Immigration Partnership update. And who do we have to speak to that today? Topeka. Topeka, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning, everyone. As I was listening to the discussion on investment strategies and value proposition, which is need to be applied to, to the entire community, I think. And it's a promise that 
we as Grey County making to any client who's thinking to invest in Grey County and any immigrant who's thinking to move to Grey County, that they will feel part of the community. And I see that a lot of GB lip sections till now are pretty aligned with the potential recommendation given by Jerry. And the major focus on you know, social determinants of health, where we really focus on quality of life, collaboration with Southern Western Ontario LIPS, and discussing challenges with the employers and making Grey Bruce County visible at federal and provincial level. As we are in process, we already have those videos with us to share, IRC, share with IRCC what's available outside of GTA for any immigrants who are thinking to come to Canada. There are numerous initiatives which GB Lib is working on in partnership with uh, organizations across Grand Bruce. Out of them, the priority is on accommodating Ukrainian families coming to the region. And GB Lib, along with partner council members such as Welcoming Community Grey Bruce and YMCA, are trying to navigate the resources and requirements. We're also part of Support Task Support Ukraine task force for the town of Blue Mountains, where again, we are trying to assign roles and responsibility within the group who have the capacity and resources to do whatever possible to accommodate. As IRCC has created the Canada-Ukrainian authorization for emergency travel measures, and through those measures, Ukrainian and their dependents will be able to work and study while in Canada for up to three years. So uh, briefly explaining the work we have done past months, we collaborated with community organizations, employers and municipal leaders to provide training and education to expand knowledge of justice, equity, diversity and inclusion and introduce this practice into policies, processes and everyday work life. We had different sectors involved in these initiatives. We, we conducted diversity dialogues with municipal leaders to initiate a, a conversation around JEDI and where we need to understand the importance of engaging all municipalities, which will certainly build the foundation for a collaborative approach to cultivate inclusive and equitable culture within organizations and communities. Uh, apart from this, we, in collaboration with Nuclear Innovation Institute, we conducted five training sessions where we offer, which, which were offered to municipal staff across Grey and Bruce counties to learn more about and understand equity in practice using inclusive language and promoting inclusive communities. We also had one small business inclusive workforce de policy development workshop, which was hosted in partnership with Grey Bruce Small Business Enterprise Center to guide business owners and HR staff through the development process to create an inclusive work workforce policy. And the major focus was on train the trainer pro project, whose main which main purpose was to create facilitated workshops on justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion with region specific content delivered by by lo for local residents. And these local residents are being trained for this project, representing a diverse area of identities, including uh, folks who are newcomer, immigrant, LGBTQ community, and indigenous community among other diverse identities. With the guidance and training from the consultant, these trainees will be equipped with the knowledge and resources to deliver workshops to partners, employers, and other local groups through 2022-2023. And a training manual will also be developed to allow more local JEDI trainers to deliver workshop across the region. Last month on April 21st, we had employer roundtable discussing the challenges and best practices they had while hiring new immigrant and how to retain them. And there's a need felt to move to have more discussion and resources and more specifically a platform where all employers can share their good and bad experiences. Apart from it, making Gray County more uh, visible and uh, uh, welcoming, we have developed one marketing campaign with a tone of inclusivity, positivity, encouragement, and aspirationality, which we are hoping to run down after May. That's all for GBLA. That's all, Topeka. Oh my, <laughs> the work that you are doing is so important, and your report is so extensive. Thank you so much. May I ask you, you mentioned Ukrainian families. Do we have some uh, that have come into our region? Are you able to tell us how many? Yes, so we have settlement services uh, involved in this because that's the first point of contact. We being GB Lib 
is uh, like the indirect services we cannot be the first point of contact but we do have the platform where we can share the resources so we have settlement our partner council member which are sharing and giving us continuous updates that we have a pool of volunteers who are ready to host ukrainian families and few our partner our partner council member which is in gta newcomer center of peel they have also uh, indicated that a couple of families probably will be coming and yesterday only jacinda got confirmation that one of the family has moved to town of blue mountains and have got the job as well there so we don't have the specific number right now because they are in process of coming here to but we do have the potential here to accommodate them here as we have volunteers who are ready to host them that is really wonderful any other questions or comments for uh, Topeka today? And Heather says, no, not at this time. Topeka, thank you so much. Keep doing what you're doing. You're doing a great job. Thank you. And moving on to D, Climate Change Action Plan, Going Green and Gray. And we have the two reports um, in our agenda. And I'm sure everyone has read them through. They are, I'm going to say, magnificently done. Do we have Linda with us today? And is there anything she would like to add in relation to these reports? Hello, thank you. Yes. Um, so just to share that, uh, as, as was mentioned by the chair, that these first climate change action plan for Gray County was adopted uh, in late April. Uh, and we're very excited about it. We think it lays out a strong path uh, to achieve the net zero greenhouse gas emission target uh, that Council adopted by 2050, which puts us in line with the federal commitments uh, and really signals Gray County's commitment uh, to take the kind of bold action needed in response to our rapidly changing climate. Um, a couple of additional things just to share. Uh, we do have, and this is where I'm hoping my, this is gonna work on the screen and maybe it isn't, but uh, we've created some small postcards which link to the Gray County Climate Action webpage. And we'd be thrilled if anyone sees an opportunity to distribute these. Um, we have a page set up where residents and businesses can link both to a 20 odd page summary document of the plan and also for those really interested the more fulsome 120 page uh, sort of robust analysis of how we landed on the recommendations and to connect this climate action work I think to the conversations today. Um, I think we all know that we need to take climate action because it's the right thing to do. Um, but one of the reasons it's the right thing to do is because of the economic opportunities that it will bring to us, um, both in terms of investment attraction and for our existing businesses. Uh, a survey in the fall of 2021 identified that 69% of Ontarians think that governments need to be doing more uh, relating to climate change. And so when people are thinking about a place they want to make home, we know that they will be looking at whether or not that community is taking the climate crisis seriously and responding to it. Similarly, the Ontario Chamber of Commerce did a survey of their membership last year, and the majority of respondents said that they felt climate change was affecting the communities that they operated. Uh, and certainly for our businesses, we there was a conversation earlier around broadband internet being necessary for us to be able to attract investment. Having infrastructure that is ready for our changing climate is equally important. Um, and also making sure we're doing our part to reduce our contribution to climate change. Uh, so certainly if there's any specific questions uh, around the report, we're more than happy to to respond to them, but we look forward to working uh, with all of you and with all of our local businesses, um, because it really is a, an all of community plan um, to move forward with the direction from County Council. Thank you, Linda. And I would like to say that our County Council, I think, has been very bold in suggesting of uh, moving to a net zero by 2045 and the, uh, uh, the uh, ordering of the uh, electric trucks. I think we're we're off to a, a good start and setting the example for uh, our communities. So uh, thank you for that. And thank you to staff for, uh, for supporting and uh, making those recommendations to council. Um, Councillor Body has his hand up. And there is another plank in our uh, value proposition. Well said. <laughs> well said. Are there any other hands, Heather? 
No, Madam Chair. Thank you. And uh, just to finish, Linda, I would like some postcards. Be happy to get those distributed out around me for. Fantastic. Okay. And uh, the official plan amendment uh, number 11 update. Randy, over to you. I think Scott's going to provide a quick update on this, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Randy, and, and uh, thanks, uh, Chair Keevney and, and members of the committee. So I think when we met last time on February 9th, we had just recently had our public meeting on what we're calling Official Plan Amendment Number 11. Uh, and just as a very quick refresher, this is an official plan amendment to look at uh, updating our, our growth uh, population and employment numbers, which ties very, ties in very nicely with, with uh, some of the themes we've heard here today. Um, and it's also looking at fine tuning some of our policies. Uh, there's been some adjustments made to the affordable housing policies and, and uh, recognizing other types of housing units. Um, there's also been some uh, adjustments made with respect to climate change and, and uh, starting to enact some of the very early recommendations of, of uh, the climate change action plan that Linda just spoke about. Uh, and then there are a number of other housekeeping uh, changes. We are looking at preparing a finalized version of the amendment based on the feedback we've we've heard over the past few months. Uh, there have also been some changes here locally that have caused us to uh, uh, to look at uh, reconsidering a few things and adding to the scope. Uh, one of those changes is is based very heavily on on the local growth climate and and uh, the recent passing of the minister's zoning orders in in uh, Southgate and in Dundalk. Uh, so we're looking at incorporating some of the minister's direction in that regard, working with our friends, of course, at the township of Southgate. Um, so long story short, we, we really do hope to have a, a, um, an updated version of the official plan amendment within the next one to two months uh, for, for both the public, municipalities, businesses, and ultimately county council to consider. Um, certainly happy to take any questions if there are any, but it's, it's just a, a quick update at this time. Thank you, Scott. Um, does anyone have any questions for Scott at this point in time? No. Well, Scott, I just want to add how thoroughly you are addressing this and how much it's appreciated the time you're taking to make sure that uh, the public and, and council and everyone has an opportunity to participate in this process. So looking forward to the, uh, the end report. Thank you. We will move on to F, the Age-Friendly Community Strategy and Action Plan. And who do we have to speak to that today? Stephanie's going to provide an update on that. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so yeah, just a bit, bit of a brief update. Um, some of you that were part of are part of this committee, um, thank you again for participating through the uh, consultation process to create the age-friendly community strategy and action plan at the county. Um, your input was really valuable, and I'm happy to say that it did made it make its way into the final action plan. Um, the action plan has roughly 116 different action items. Um, there's about 15 to 20 that are specific to economic development. However, I would argue that if you're looking to carry out all of those action items, they would have several positive spin-offs in some respect to economic development specifically. Um, and yeah, just to give you a bit of an example of some of the ones that came through from this group and, and otherwise um, looking to create a, a Gray County Age-Friendly Community Advisory Committee. Um, so that would be connecting all municipalities throughout the, the county um, and, and ensuring ongoing discussions are, are occurring with respect to age-friendly community development. Um, we also had a recommendation um, for an age-friendly community toolkit for businesses. And so this would help businesses further um, become aware and understand what they could do in terms of the physical um, changes, as well as social changes to accommodate age-friendly um, objectives and initiatives. Um, we also had an initiative here at Action Item speaking to late career opportunities and, and or accessibility needs. Um, so looking at diversifying um, employment options for those that may be looking to um, scale back a bit in their employment um, if they're getting to a certain age um, and they just don't want to work full time, for example, if their physical abilities aren't such that they were before in order for them to carry out what they um, had previously done in terms of their employment. Um, and so, yeah, I guess just a, a bit of a brief snapshot of what we've incorporated through this action plan. Um, and in terms of next steps, we are looking to proceed with an application with the World Health Organization 
to receive an age-friendly community designation, which is something that we can do at this stage with the completed reports, action item and action plan and strategy. Um, and so that's underway and hoping to have that completed in the next couple of months. And so that would be maybe another ticket into or token into the Gray County hat of economic development and promoting us on a world, world stage. Um, as well, just looking to create an, a work plan for incorporating this in, incorporating and, and implementing this plan in the next year. Thank you, Stephanie. And may I say another incredible report for Gray County and Councillor Body. Shall we suggest another unique value proposition? Yes, I, and I think uh, this discussion proves that everything does tie in with economic development. So it's uh, it's all so very appropriate to be on our agenda today. Are there any questions or comments for Stephanie? Not at this point in time. Stephanie, very thank you very, very much for, for adding this report today. And uh, just before we uh, wrap up the meeting today, is there anything anyone else wants to add at this point in time that they've thought of uh, throughout the meeting? Any final comments? Not at this point in time, thank you. And the next meeting date uh, to be determined. So we will uh, we will hear about that. And if there's uh, nothing else uh, today, then I will uh, call for adjournment. Is there a mover to adjourn? Oh, Councillor Body, and is there a seconder? I see Councillor Woodbury. Thank you, Councillor Woodbury. And I just want to again thank everybody for the really great discussion today. I enjoyed this meeting very much, and, and I think we uh, had a lot of really uh, appropriate and important comments for the uh, for the strategy that we've heard today for international uh, investment. So thanks to everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day. Get out in the sunshine. Bye now. Thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you. Thanks everybody. Good meeting. Yeah. Have a great Bye. day. Bye.